Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, my name is Christy and I am a third year homeschooling mom to five kids. And today I'm going to share with you our plans for the spring as well as some resources and read alouds that we are including in our last few months of school for the year. So stay tuned. Yeah, you're taking me high. collaboration with my friend Gina over at Gina B. On Gina's channel you will find so much content about homeschooling and she offers so much encouragement about motherhood as well as homeschooling so I just absolutely love Gina and I think you will too so check out her channel and also check out the playlist when you are finished with this video. First and foremost we are in March. It's time to start thinking about springtime. Here in the Midwest our temperatures are still kind of fluctuating. We had a couple really nice days and now it's back to just snowing and coldness. And so I know me as well as my kids, we are very much looking forward to springtime and all of the activities, being outdoors. And these are just some of the things that I plan on including in our homeschool in the next few months. We're gonna change some things up a little bit as well as what we are planning to do for Easter. So I will share with you what we are going to be using for Easter as well as some read alouds that we will be using around Easter time. First and foremost, I will go ahead and go through these read alouds. Some of them I have talked about on my channel before, but I've broken them down into some categories. I'm gonna start with the read alouds that have to do with outdoorsy things, whether that is plant and animal life. Uh, around springtime is when we like to get outdoors and do nature studies and just observe wildlife. And I know so many of you guys like doing that too. So these are some of the read alouds that I will be including in on our homeschool. First and foremost, I have this Magic School Bus Hops Home, a book about animal habitats. So I like to break out the books about animals and their habitats because when we go and do our nature study, the kids will be able to point out some of these things or we can talk about where some of the animals may live out where we live. So this book is all about nature habitats. I think this is even the old school. This is an old school Magic School Bus book. I remember reading this when I was little. It was like, it came out in like 1995. Going on, about animals these what if you had books this one's about animal teeth this one's animal eyes this one's animal nose this one's animal hair these are so fun my kids love flipping through these books they're kind of silly but they explain in a very fun way different attributes of animals and their uh, their purpose and yeah, my kids just love these books. They're very, very fun. Love the Julia Rothman books. We have this nature anatomy book. This really is amazing when we do nature studies um, in a very fantastically illustrated book to be able to identify some plants and animals and flowers and everything that we could find outdoors. This is a new purchase for me. This is called The Honey Bee. This is a really fun picture book that has a lot of onomatopoeias and adjectives if you wanna sneak in a little bit of language arts into your springtime read alouds. But as you can see here, we see some onomatopoeias right there. Um, this is another fantastically illustrated very fun book if you were also to be um, learning about honeybees in any portion of your homeschool this is a great read aloud to go along with it we love National Geographic kids books this one we've had for a while it is caterpillar to butterfly every spring we do a butterfly garden we order the cat the cup of the caterpillars and we have a little butterfly habitat and then we let them go when they grow into butterflies so we will be doing this in the next month or so when it starts getting a little bit warmer but that is always such a fun activity to do with my kids it just amazes us every time to watch them transform from these really hungry little caterpillars to these big fat caterpillars and then into their chrysalides and then and hatch into beautiful butterflies. So this is a great book to go along with that. And then this one is from DK Books. This is Life Cycles. We've been using this with our ecosystems um, stuff for My Father's World. But this just talks about the different life cycles and it is a great way to incorporate how the changing seasons can affect the life cycles of different plants and animals. Some of the more biographical books that I like to include in during springtime is this Diana's White House Garden picture book. This is all about 
Diana Hopkins and how she helped Franklin Delano Roosevelt during World War II to make the World War II Victory Garden and how it became kind of a national phenomenon during that time where people started planting their World War II Victory Gardens. So this is a very fun, very awesome book to teach kids about that and about the importance of gardening and um, how important it was then when there were so many shortages during World War II for people to grow their own food and to be a little bit more self-sustained. And unfortunately applies a lot right now in these times. So this is a great book to teach about the World War II Victory Gardens. This one is about George Washington Carver, A Weed is a Flower. Um, this book actually kind of made me cry. <laughs> I don't know why, but learning about George Washington Carver and just, he's just a fantastic person. Um, I, I highly encourage you to teach your kids about George Washington Carver and about all that he had achieved um, despite multiple setbacks in his life. He was just an amazing man. So this is a great book to teach about George Washington Carver. And then this one is Carl in the Garden. This is from the Good and the Beautiful Library. And this is about Carl Linnaeus and how he discovered just an absolute love for all things gardening and how he created the names and groupings of multiple species of animals and plants. Crawl in the Garden from the Good and the Beautiful Library is a great way to teach about that. Now these are just some fun read-alouds uh, that are just very wholesome and spring -y, and I just love reading these to my kids. This one is one of Zoe's favorite. It's The Tale of Peter Rabbit. We love Beatrix Potter over here and Peter Rabbit is always a classic. We love the Fletcher books, Fletcher and the Springtime Blossoms. This is a really, really fun book. It is adorable. My kids always get into the Fletcher book. We also have some of the other seasons. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's a wonderful springtime book. This one is called Margaret's Unicorn. And this isn't necessarily even like spring, but it, if you read the book, it makes more sense. But it is just a beautifully illustrated book. Who doesn't love unicorns? It just gives me this springtime feeling. I don't know, I just love this book. This is another one of Zoe's favorites that she has me read to her multiple times a week. And so, yeah, I would totally recommend this to add to your springtime li lineup. And then We Are the Gardeners by Joanna Gaines and her kids. This is one of my favorite books. Um, and it's just such a beautiful illustration of hard work and cultivation and learning and growing and failing and trying again. It's just a really, really beautifully illustrated and also beautifully written book by Joanna Gaines. Okay, that is it for our read alouds that are springtime themed. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the activities and things that we are going to be doing this spring. First and foremost, this one is something that we started last year, but my kids really got into it and I'm so excited to be doing this again with them. Gardening. <laughs> um, right around this time, actually in another week or so, we will be planting our first seedlings. So I just get these little uh, jiffy pots and then some packs of seeds. And when it gets warmer out, we will be making another butterfly garden outside near our gardens. We got three raised gardens last year and the kids, first we planted the seedlings and they grew in our house until the threat of frost passed. And then we planted those seedlings in the ground and their plants took off last year. I think we had the most success from those seedlings that they planted and it was just so neat to see their faces whenever they grew something that they had planted themselves. It was just learning in motion. It was amazing and I highly encourage you even if gardening intimidates you a little bit like it does to me, try. Try try something small with your kids. Try to grow something very small with your kids, whether it is just like a little herb garden or something. They will be amazed that the things that they planted actually sprout with a little bit of love and care. And it's a really fun experience to bring learning to life. And, and if you want to add in um, seed studies or learning about plants or things like that, that is just a really easy, fun, and 
honestly very low stress way to bring fun and hands-on activity into your homeschool during the springtime. I, I just love this tradition that we have. We're going to be, like I said, planting our little seedlings again here soon and we're gonna watch them grow in our house until it's time to plant them out in the actual garden. Something new that I will be adding into our springtime in our homeschool this year is from Treehouse Schoolhouse. It is the spring nature study and when I was on her website I was looking at expectant Easter which I will be talking about in a little bit I came across this nature study and it just I don't know it just grabbed my attention and I bought it I so don't regret it it is beautiful I have not printed it out yet I'm waiting on some um higher quality paper to print it out on I will give you a little flip through of the pages that I will be printing out it comes with books and reference materials a book list artists and poet studies it is just such a really fun well-rounded nature study and it goes for 13 weeks so we get to start it as soon as we come back from spring break around spring break right now and when we come back next week we will start our nature study and every week is divided up into a different category so you'll be learning about seedlings and rainbows and all kinds of things that have to do with spring it is so beautifully broken down into digestible pieces for all ages so many fun hands-on activities and also something that we can use year after year but i think we're really going to enjoy this nature study so this brings us to easter what are we going to do for easter this year last year we did gather around easter we really really enjoyed that i was looking for something fresh and new to do this year and of course i landed on an expectant easter from treehouse schoolhouse i only have the cover printed out but I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's a Charlotte Mason inspired Easter study, but it's more than a study. It's like you completely immerse yourself in the word and in a way that your kids really understand what the story is of Easter and why Jesus died and, and why he resurrected. And it's just going to be such a really amazing experience. I can just feel it already. Like it just spoke to my heart so much when I saw it. Like I said, it is three weeks of activities leading up to Easter. So we're going to be starting this on March 28th so that we have three weeks of Easter activities leading up to the actual day. And it comes with a narration notebook, it comes with a teacher guide, and it comes with student sheets. So with the narration notebook, you're going to be reading a scripture verse and your ch children are going to be able to tell it back to you in their own words and you can either write it down for them or if they're in the higher grade they can write it down themselves and illustrate and it is going to be I think a beautiful keepsake as well um, just from this time where we get together around as a family and really just immerse ourselves in talking about the Lord and talking about Jesus and what he did for us and what Easter really, really means. Another thing that absolutely caught my eye with an expectant Easter is that there are easy to do activities that aren't completely overwhelming leading up to a major holiday. Um, and that is a huge thing for me is if I see activities that have so many things that are included in with them that I have to be running from store to store to go buy, it's kind of a turn off for me. So to see this doable list of supplies that I would need for this, knowing that we have a majority of these things already in our house and that I would only have to grab a couple things here and there is just such a plus for me. So to go along with our, um, an expectant Easter study. I have a couple of read alouds, but they also have a book list in this that I will probably be grabbing a couple more things, whether it's from the library or from Amazon just to have. But this book, The Tale of the Three Trees, is one of the best illustrations it's about how our dreams and our hopes and our wishes are made so much more beautiful through Jesus. And so if you read the book, you'll understand. I don't want to give it away because this book brings tears to my eyes every time. So The Tale of Three Trees definitely is a must during Easter time and just all year round, honestly, all year round. The Donkey Who Carried the King by R.C. Sproul is another amazing story um, about how 
even the lowliest of lows can do something for God and can be used by God to do something. And it's just another beautiful illustration in this book, Donkey and the King. And then the Easter storybook, we really enjoyed this last year. It has beautiful pictures in it breaks down the different stories of Jesus into little one page um, summaries and also points out the Bible verses that you can find it. The Easter storybook, love this so much. So those are our plans for Easter this year. I'm really looking forward to utilizing treehouse schoolhouses and expecting Easter. It was something I had my eye on last year, but Gather Round kind of uh, won out in that aspect. And this year I wanted something new and something fresh because we are only in our third year of homeschooling. So we are trying new things. We are seeing the things that fit well and the things that aren't really hits. <laughs> so these are our hits and misses, so to speak. We really enjoyed Gather Around, like I said last year. That is another fantastic Easter curriculum, but I'm really excited to um, have kind of a change of pace this year and do a three week little study leading up to Easter. So where are we going to fit this in? We kind of have a set schedule already, right? I have one of two things that I'm thinking. We'll either shift our My Father's World work from after lunch to our morning basket. So we will do the things that we would be doing after lunch shift it to our morning basket and then make room in the afternoon for nature study or Easter study or whatever we have to do. Um, another thing is we could keep my father's world where it is and just do this as our morning basket but I feel like it would be a really sweet way to end out the day whether we're doing the nature study or whether we're doing um, the Easter study. I just feel like it'll be a really fun, nice way to end out the day. So you guys let me know if you want a more in de detail flip through of the nature study and also an expectant Easter. I love supporting other mamas who are coming out with curriculum and they know it best, don't they? Like the homeschool moms know what we need the most and I just love supporting mamas who are coming out with such amazing curriculum like this and something so beautiful and Charlotte Mason inspired it just hits all of those check boxes for me when it comes to curriculum that I'm really I'm really interested in utilizing in my homeschool so you guys let me know if you want me to go ahead and do a video about this in detail when I have it all printed out and ready to go. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, this look into what we were going to be doing for spring, these read alouds, our Easter stuff. So be sure to check out Gina's channel in the description box down below as well as the playlist. Like I said, Gina is such a fantastic person. She's such a great friend and encouragement to me and I know you guys will absolutely love her. And also the playlist is going to have, I think Gina said 16 ladies participating. So you are not going to be short on content. <laughs> so if you are looking for ideas for springtime activities or things to do with your family, your kids, ways to incorporate springtime into your homeschool day, I'm sure you will find some fantastic ideas. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you weren't already subscribed, I would absolutely love to have you here. Please hit that subscribe button. Like this video if you enjoyed this content and I will talk to you guys very soon. Take care. You look so beautiful And I'm so lucky to be yours